All right, now we're getting into it here at Encore. We're opening up the bracket tonight with uh, Arc Ryujin versus Auresco. It's going to be Shulk versus Lake. Now, this is an interesting matchup. And Shulk is a character that almost indisputably everyone agrees really, really solid, uh, but still seldom seen due to his, the technical demand that the character sort of really requires. So let's see how Auresco is doing as we're seeing 90% is all that's been done to Ryujin. He's looking pretty comfortable right now. Link does have decent range himself. I think that uh, Shulk might be the king of range overall. But, uh, oh, nice bomb jump. Ooh, and a counterattack down air. That's a little silly. Anyway, I'm unfamiliar with these two players. Uh, I'm not sure if they actually come here regularly. Actually, I do recognize Oresco, so I have seen him before. Oh, I don't see him on stream too very often, but here he is now finally getting that first stock off of Yuriuge, and let's see if he can do any more of it. He is in buster mode right now. That does mean it's easier for him to die. He, all moves that will hit him will do more damage. Oh, and that bomb actually enough. Yeah, the look on his face, I don't think he was quite expecting that option to seal the deal for him. And now he's... Things are running pretty difficult for him. He snaps into that shield mode, preventing him from taking any serious combo at the most part. He has to be mindful of that bomb on the platform right above him. Oh, that could be really big. Oh, okay. oh I was about to say, kind of opted for the, uh, the quicker punish of instead of maybe charging a forward smash. But instead, that was the right call. Just quickly get him off stage, switches to smash, and cleans out the stock. Now we have Oresco. I, I do think it's really important to note what mode the Shulk chooses and when. As you can see right there. Okay, now he's in speed mode. I think he's looking to just maybe command the stage, gain some just chip damage here and there. Short hop neutral, when you are in a speed mode, because your jump height is reduced, the move just becomes, it's just like a traveling beam of destruction. <gasps> Super deep for that. That would have probably been really good for him if it worked out, but stands right now. Oh, I, maybe I sent talked a little bit too soon. He's in control. The bomb jump actually doesn't work out on Oresco, making a huge comeback. Going to be taking game one. Oh, and he is playing the shirtless Shulk skin. So, you know, a man of culture. What? <laughs> Honestly, I've always thought that the, uh, that the, like, the skin for Shulk to the beach outfit, they wanted to put the bikini outfit for Zero Suit Samus, and they're like, that's sexist. He can't do that. And they're like, it's not sexist if we give the sexiest male character a beach body outfit. <laughs> and so that's why we have beach outfit Shulk. Ooh, is he going to be playing Sora? No. Good old Shulk. I realize that like that one color of Shulk, that one uh, outfit, isn't. It's like referencing some Xenoblade character, but I'm sorry, it just looks like Sora from Kingdom Hearts. All right, now we see FD as the stage counterpick, and I, you can already see based on the way that Ryujin is approaching the game. I think he wanted more space to throw projectiles to do tricky bomb things, and I can definitely agree with that. It felt like, you know, he started to go in at the end, and going in is really what cost him because he made a few pivotal mistakes at a few pivotal moments. He was up by an entire stock, and not quite a stock and a half, but it felt like it almost. 
But yeah, in the end, Oresco made that comeback. And so I like the idea of going to a flat stage, playing a much more patient, balanced game plan. You can see Oresco hungry to actually get something started. He's trying to throw out these moves unsafely on Shield. And Oresco, uh, sorry, Ryujin rather, more than happy to punish him for doing so. Oh, nice parry on that. That's uh, really hard to parry because you have to look at the link uh, for when he actually chooses to detonate it. The very tip of that explosion, and because he's in Buster, he took extra damage and extra knockback. That actually almost killed him. Oh, only the first hit of that forward air connecting. That means Oresco is still alive at the moment. I think up, okay, you know, not gonna go for the kill throw yet, but I think the next time he gets grabbed, that will probably do it for him. Right, finally getting a little bit of a poke here. It is worth noting that Shulk is one of those characters that has crazy comeback potential with Smash Art in particular. There comes a certain point where if you're a Shulk at like 160 and you go into Smash mode, you're dead to anything either way. However, now the opponent is dead to anything at 80. are in smash mode. Wow, what a read! Sees that. He foresaw that ledge roll on stage, went into smash, got the up smash, and that has basically evened up things as we stand right now. However, these early percents seem to be just, at least on FD here, completely dominated by Ryujin. See Oresco favoring that neutral air mostly. Okay, I was gonna say that earlier on it wasn't quite working out. And there were actually many points where forward air would have connected when uh, neutral air basically didn't come out fast enough. But we're seeing a much. I like the fact that he's throwing at burying up the aerials that he's you know throwing here. I think he was in Smash for a little bit too long. You do have decreased damage output when you're in Smash, you know. Put that one together. <laughs> the knockback gets increased ridiculously, but the actual damage is pretty low. <gasps> oh, that should be it! Oh, and he switched to Buster at the last second. I think he wanted shield, but no. Just the color wheel not working out for him. And that means that he has to look for this kill again somehow at the ledge earlier. That was how uh, he managed to do it, but Ryujin being a little bit more smart this time around doesn't get caught so easily. Oh. Ryujin is not quite staying outside of uh, Oresco's range. He's, you know, throwing out these projectiles, he's getting his stuff started, but oftentimes it's actually within forward air, within neutral air. So, like against Shulk, honestly, Link has the frame data to beat him out up close. So either you be up close or you're far away enough that his moves are just going to whiff and you can hit him with projectiles. Oh, great positioning right there from Ryujin. <gasps> All right, that smash mode coming in clutch. He actually switches to Buster. This is a risky play. Yeah, he takes more damage. That up tilt only killed because he wasn't Buster. But I can understand the idea behind it, that if you want to win the game, you want to make that comeback happen, you need to make a big play. And if your opponent's at low percent, and you go Buster, and you get like a 50-60 damage combo, all of a sudden you're a few hits away, then you can switch to Smash, and then maybe win the game. So by going to Buster, it is risky, but at the very least, it illustrates an effective game plan for how he was going to make that comeback. All right, now I think that FD was... FD in general was very good for Link, and so it's a really good that uh, Oresco is definitely happy he won that game one. He has the stage counter pick for this game three, and we're going to be seeing Clive Platt's Yoshi story specifically. Not only that, but he has a oh, interesting. Okay, actually, Oresco might play Ganon normally, and he's been trying to make the. Uh, Shulk work, I'm actually not certain, but at the very least we have the, actually, now that I think about it, he almost had a Ganon-esque style of Shulk, 
where he was kind of getting hit for a lot of the match, you know, getting the uh, getting pummeled. But then he made those one or two real clutch reads, and he turned them into big stocks. So I can actually absolutely see that he is a Ganon player by rope. <gasps> okay, good get up option there. Now, for Ryujin, he has not had to face this Ganon yet. But Link versus Ganon feels like a matchup that should be well within Link's control. Uh, granted, control against Ganon is... <laughs> you have it until you don't. You know, if you have this game plan of throw out projectiles, do all this stuff, you know, that's very good. Ganon has a very poor neutral in general, but with his smash attacks, with his aerials, with his kill power in general, it means that one misstep can cost you a stock extremely early. There's a point where both of these guys definitely have kill percent. <gasps> I Interesting reaction there. Okay, he's going for the dash grab. That won't actually net him a kill. 154%. There are a lot of things Link can do to finish the job right now. It's just a matter of if he can find that hit without getting killed himself. The late dash attack, one of the only things Ganon has at his disposal that won't kill, but he actually wasn't able to punish the trade there. But Ryujin staying alive, whereas Aresco has been destroyed. Okay, evens it up immediately. Now we have another finish, two stocks apiece. This is the most even we've seen these two going back and forth. I'm really liking the movement from Oresco. Ganon, not a character known for his uh, speed, but he seems to be utilizing the dash dance pretty well, especially given that one of the really sort of threatening things about Link's neutral are his projectiles. Oh, I love that up here. I think he was rearing back for it, uh, one of the wizard's foot. That up here able to interrupt. 76% oh, already! Oh, it clanked, uh, but the return boomerang helping uh, Ryujin get a little bit more damage there. This could be huge for him. Okay, good job just tech rolling away there. It is one of those situations where if you tech, if you had tech rolled towards the, uh, you know, towards the ledge there, you could have died from a lot. So the instinct was to go to the middle of the stage. Uh, Oresco has to be a little bit more careful. You know, only one or two things he can do can effectively kill and. Up smash out of shield. I don't think that jab has that much lag. I think that Ryujin just didn't immediately buffer the shield afterwards, which is, uh, I mean, against Ganon, I feel like if you mess up, if you're in his face, oh, 